This podcast is for entertainment purposes only. The opinions expressed in this episode are not to be construed as medical advice. Welcome to Demystify Beauty, a weekly podcast about creating transparency in the beauty space. I'm Mackenzie Westmore. And I'm Dr. Paul Nassif. How are you, Dr. Nassif? You know, I'm having a fantastic day where, you know, today, you know, what's great about this is when we do our podcast, it's my patient day. So, you know, I'm seeing patients all day long, as you know. Right. And then I get I to come and spend, you know, an hour talking about such really cool topics. And today, of course, is no exception. Today, I got to say, is one of my favorite topics because it is the world of, of anti-aging, of health, wellness, everything that uh, I love and that we embody in this podcast. So I want to just jump right in. You know, everybody that's <laughs> listening or watching, because I can't wait. I'm chomping at the bit here. <laughs> I mean, I'm just so passionate about this. Let's, yeah, let's go. <laughs> I want to introduce Michael and Edward of Evolve Clinic, two very dear friends of mine. They're like family at this point, and, and they run a, a very hot clinic. I know it used to be called the hot clinic, funny enough, but it is a hot clinic because it's it's a very hot topic right now of anti-aging, wellness, and I want to introduce Edward and Michael. Hello, I'm Edward. I'm Michael. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having us. It's, a, it's an honor and a pleasure. Oh, you're sweet. So tell us, how do you know these gentlemen? <laughs> well, I know them. <laughs> I pretty much live, we joke, but I pretty much do live at Evolve at this point. <laughs> I know them because I am very adamant. I'm constantly posting on my social media about anti-aging and health and wellness through vitamin drips, through peptides, through hormonal replacement. You know, I will be honest that I am a female that has low testosterone. Now, even females need testosterone. So I turn to these gentlemen to mm -hmm. help me with my testosterone. I do like to go in weekly for a vitamin drip because um, I like to keep the C, the, the zinc, the D, everything going. And we're constantly going back and forth because I'm constantly pushing for immune. And they're like, just do the Myers. Come on, you're good with the Myers. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I know them very well, but I, I really want them to jump in and, and start. I, I've always been fascinated by not just the clinic, but how they got their start. I mean, they they already were going, but through the pandemic, how they got going. So guys, do you mind jumping in and telling that story? Because I love that story. Yeah, it'd be great. Thank you so much for the great introduction. And Dr. Nassif, uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to speak about your patients, but there's one patient I'm a big fan of, and I like his work so much. Um, I'm very impressed with what you did with him. Um, Bailey from the Los Angeles Kings, the, uh, the mascot. Oh, for, yes, for yes. It was we, great we, to see. Uh, yeah, we did a Bailey. lot of work there. <laughs> yeah, it looked great. He's, uh, that was a big makeup. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, it was, uh, it was a little long in the tooth, so I think you did a great job. Oh, so. boy. Thank you, my friend. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you, Mackenzie. So, um, we started off, uh, we were actually formerly known as the Hot Clinic. Um, Hot Clinic uh, came around and we opened up our doors in uh, October of 2019. And Hot Clinic stands for Hormone Optimization Therapies. It's something that um, Michael and myself are very much into. Um, we've been patients of hormone replacement therapy for over 10 years now. And so when we opened up the clinic, it was the idea of, you know, giving that concierge care, giving that spa feeling um, with the medical necessity of, you know, hormone replacement therapy with the uh, guidance of our medical director, Dr. Benito Villanueva. Um, when we opened in, in October 2019, of course, everybody knows that sh shortly after we had the pandemic. Yep. Um, we were fortunate enough to uh, pivot in such a way where we started doing COVID testing. Um, at one point, uh, it was probably maybe the the shutdown for, for uh, Los Angeles came March 20th. We did our first COVID test uh, April 7th. So within three weeks, we started doing the uh, COVID testing from the shutdown. Um, we pivoted in such a way where we started um, uh, taking care of the entertainment industry. Uh, mm -hmm. We were on some great shows and some great um, productions uh, that helped everybody get back to work. And we were very busy with mm -hmm. that for the last three to four years. Yeah. Um, at this point with the productions, I feel that they have it under control where they don't need uh, outside help from the laboratory because we are we are also a laboratory. We're a, a modern complex laboratory. That's how we can do these COVID tests. Um, okay. So we shifted and we shifted again, uh, maybe about what, maybe six months ago, we rebanded. Um, yep. because we offer so much more than just hormone replacement therapy at this point. 
So in a sense, we evolved. <laughs> so you did, yeah. Um, yeah. So Edward, as as you know, Edward and I are big hockey fans, and one of the greats is Wayne Gretzky, and his rule was go to where the puck is gonna be, not where it is. So when COVID hit, we said people are gonna need some tests. So we, you know, we pivoted, we we shifted our gears, did COVID testing. When we saw that the puck is shifting to another, you know, it's going from the necessity of COVID tests to people are getting back on track with their daily lives. A ton of people have gained weight because of COVID. Mm-hmm. Um, I do I do a lot of the patient consults here. Um, a vast majority of them have gained over forty pounds since the pandemic. Wow. So that you know we're we're doing the we're doing the the consultations the the healthcare stuff and the COVID testing and we're seeing the puck go back to health. People want to get healthy. They don't care about getting tested anymore. So then we shifted gears going back to, you know, where, where the puck is going to be, which is getting people back on track with their health, feeling good, looking good, eating the right foods. And one of the things that we've included in our rebrand was taking a look at what's causing the symptoms of lower hormones. What's disrupting the synthesis of these hormones, growth hormones? Why are people looking like the way they eat? And so Edward, Edward is a much more um, well-versed expert in, in this field. I'm more of just, you know, bringing things up. Um, <laughs> but we, we, we got really interested in seeing how people respond to food. Mm-hmm. Avocados are great for one person. But for me, for example, might not be so good. And, you know, every time I eat an avocado, I feel like I'm dying. It should be a health food. What's the difference? What's the discrepancy here? So we we um, formulated this this new plan with our with our newfound business of testing to see what the inflammatory response is from foods and how that affects our health and our aging process. Is this food causing inflammation, which is accelerating my aging? I'm gonna let Ed, you know, I'm, I'm running out of words to say here, so I'm gonna let Ed do all the, all the magic. Of, well, of, yeah. of it. And I can and attest well. as well. <laughs> Well, yeah, just just, just a, a step back so we, we get a you know a ten thousand foot view of what we're ser- our services are about. Like I said, we start off as hormone replacement because that's what you know Mike and I were very heavily into. But then it's not just hormones; it's overall well being, it's overall what longevity, um, anti aging, biohacking. These are all you know the key words that that we base a lot of our treatments off of. So you know we we see people that just you know are are, you know sluggish they're not motivated they're not feeling well to people that are having you know chronic inflammatory diseases um you know current medication current medicine it doesn't really cure the disease it just kind of takes the symptoms away you're still living with the disease but you know once you take those medications away the symptoms come back so we started doing a lot of investing a lot of research uh into find trying to find the cause from all this and the deduction that we came up with with our medical director as well is simply what we put in our bodies, right? And Mike touched base on it uh, just a little while ago uh, regarding the, the food sensitivity. So we've uh, teamed up with a company that's called Cell Science. They're based out of Florida. And the what we do is we, we take a look at your blood and we see what's going on as far as what foods you can eat. What foods are causing inflammation, the degree of inflammation. And with that, we also do something called a CMA, which is a cellular micronutrient assay, which really goes into finding finding out within your cells how much of these vitamins and nutrients are you lacking? How much more can mm-hmm. you be used? Right? So the main difference between uh, the and we, we also have an in-house laboratory where we do a lot of these tests in-house, like for instance, vitamin D and vitamin E. It's a it B. It's a staple for our general panel because we want to see. What's going on with the patient's vitamin B levels and vitamin D levels? The problem with those tests is it, we're checking the serum. We're not checking the whole blood. So essentially what the serum is, is the cells around the, 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 the volume around the cells. We're not looking in the cells. Working with cell science, it's an actual whole blood test. We're not taking, we're not taking an SST, spinning it down, getting the serum and testing the serum. We're checking what's inside of the blood. And Mackenzie, we, we, did, we did yours. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we we had some very interesting things to yep. review. Yeah, one of the things that was very interesting for us was um, when Mackenzie uh, came came and started seeing us. She was getting pretty sick pretty often. How often would you say, Mackenzie? It was almost like at least once a month. I had a cold or a flu, or uh, you know, I, I was getting sick very often. And I came to you what uh, in twenty twenty? I think I started coming to you. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, it was mid twenty twenty. Um, you know, battling COVID, battling, you know, uh, just 
the whole paranoia of what is happening with us. What's, you know, what that, everybody was very fearful and very scared yeah. of what's what's out there what's going to hurt us mm -hmm. so that's where we saw a lot of people come in one including Mackenzie, saying what can i do to better my health well mm -hmm. we started on a, a good vitamin drip regimen myers cocktails my personal favorite that's why i keep you know referring to myers but we would also include you know uh, immune boost we'll do glutathione we do amino acids nad fantastic for anti-aging purposes but when we started doing the more in-depth testing for for Mackenzie, we got the results a couple of weeks ago. We noticed something that almost every drip that Mackenzie did, she would get a glutathione push, a mm -hmm. decent amount, five thousand, seven thousand of milligrams of glutathione. And we found that her body, it actually um, her her system, I should say, needed more glutathione. So it was still in the protective phase, but there was more for her to absorb. And we kind of deduct this. We said, wait, when we started doing this glutathione treatment for you and you getting a, a healthy amount yeah, and your body still says, your, your tests still say you're still in need of it. We went back and said, when was the last time you got sick? And that, that question brought, brought it up. Yeah. And uh, Mackenzie, how long has it been? It's been uh, the last time I got sick, touch wood, was January of 2022. Yeah. So, yeah. it's Over a year. Over a year. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, wow. and, and I, I personally think it's a lot to do with because, you know, Mackenzie's, uh, you know, dedication to helping making sure that she doesn't, she doesn't, she has all the nutrients that she needs, all the, all the vitamins that she needs. And so getting this test from Mackenzie and seeing what foods cause um, inflammation, right? So it's not an allergy test. Allergy test, you know, you eat it, you have an inflammatory response within, you know, a couple hours to all the way to eight to 12 hours. This is inflammation. We're eating the right. foods and it's causing inflammation. The inflammation could come up within two to three days, right? And so we're sort of reducing those inflammatory response markers. And what was what was one of the, the foods that you found most interesting, Mackenzie, that, that you had an inflammatory response to? Well, the, the interesting thing for me was I, I do feel lucky, actually, because I know like you, Edward, had some that you weren't thrilled about. But my main list was lamb, sage, and walnuts. I don't like any of them, so I was cool with that. I was totally fine. <laughs> I was like, yeah, we're good. I can have coffee, awesome. That's all I cared about. If you told me no coffee, I would have been like, just kill me now. So right. that was the interesting thing that my main list was that, but some of the ones that I have noticed, there's certain things in my diet that I will get a little congested after I eat them. Uh, one of them being certain dairies, and I do like whey protein shakes. Now, I always noticed that I would get this minor congestion. Now I realize as I'm cutting things out, those, or I'm altering, like I'm shifting instead of, uh, you know, milk in or creamer in my coffee in the morning, I'm using oat milk. So as I've changed that, I'm no longer getting congested. That was always my inflammatory response was congestion. So now that's gone. So it's been interesting on this journey with you, you gentlemen, um, actually all three of you, I've been on, on, an ama on a major journey with all three of you. Um, but to, to bring it back to this, it's been really interesting to shift my diet and, and, and eliminate some of these things that are causing an inflammatory response. Yeah. And to, you know, to, to bring it back to my, to my personal, you know, I, I did this test and, you know, I have to, I'm guinea pig, you know, we're going to make sure everything <laughs> is, is good enough for you guys. It has to be good enough for me. Um, I kind of low key regretted it because I, I, my, my favorite, <laughs> I know you is, did. Yeah, you know, I just a little bit because I'm struggling right now. I'm, I'm on uh, week six of my uh, adjusted diet, um, which means I don't have any more beef and I'm, you know, I would eat steaks two to three times a week oh, wow. and you know, my favorite's a ribeye. So, um, I'm struggling cause I'm, I'm basically eating is chicken, uh, quinoa, uh, buckwheat, a uh, handful of nuts uh, every day. Uh, and of course some, some, some leafy greens as well. Uh, but you know, it's, it's what I've felt in the last six weeks for me personally. Um, and it, it's, it's my joint pain. My joint pain has, has been relieved significantly. I've lost about 12 pounds. Um, and I'm not changing my, you know, my workout routine or any of my other peptides that I'm taking. The one thing that I did remember during Easter, uh, which was a few weeks back, um, you know, we, it's hard to eat around my specific diet uh, during the holidays and, and we're Armenian. So we have a very big, you know, religious belief in the Easter. And, and, and um, so it's a, it's a big feast. I was like, okay, I'm not sticking to the diet. I'll just, and still, I didn't eat bad. It was just rice. It was, you know, some salad, it was some spinach, um, a little bit of pastries here and there. 
But one thing I noticed, the next day I woke up with in so much pain. I felt like I ran like a, a marathon. My wow. feet were so sore. And I was like, it's it's interesting that, you know, you, you eliminate these foods and you kind of, well, you feel okay. You feel good. And then when you introduce it after you haven't had it for a while, the inflammation kicks in, you feel it right away. And I realized how much, how much my food. And I've been, you know, eating healthy and taking care of myself for, you know, majority of my life. Uh, but I, I would have never expected that to have that type of response to this inflammation. It was very interesting. Yeah. So for, for my Alcat, I have obstructive sleep apnea. I've had mm. it for a while. Um, there was a situation where Ed and I had to share a hotel room. It was a last minute booking for business and we had to share a room. We, had, we hadn't done this for like 20 years, 30 years. We're both on yeah. testosterone. We can't be in the same room together for too long. You know, we're <laughs> I know you guys so, can. <laughs> so uh, we, we were working, <laughs> we were working really hard. And as you know, when, you know, when you're really tired and you have sleep apnea, you're waking everybody up. So it's about four o'clock in the morning and I get shaken awake by Ed and I'm like, what is, what's happening? He's like, you stop breathing in your sleep. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. oh, I don't no. think that's good. I don't no. think that's good. I've heard you need to breathe, but multiple minutes. Yeah. It was, it was scary. Yeah, it was very so scary. Look in his eyes was like, I mean, this guy likes to hurt me, but not like that. So I saw like actual fear in his eyes about oh, it. So when I got, when wow. I did my Alcat test, I have a ton of severe responses. Um, I start eliminating them. It hurts because I love red meat. I can't have red meat for, for six months, I think. Um, and my chemical response too. So it's not only foods, but it's chemicals, food preservatives, food dyes, things like that. I've, I've been on my Alcat regimen. I have a significant other who is no longer being disturbed by my loud snoring and then lack of snoring, lack of breathing. She says, hey, you're, you're breathing fine. I'm like, great. I did a sleep study. I, have, I don't have my results on hand, but my neurologist has said you have significant reduction in your obstructive sleep apnea. There's less reoccurrences. Um, it's, I'm super grateful because I don't have to wear that jet fighter mask anymore. Wow, yeah. Um, I've, I've lost a significant amount of weight, but listen to this. I have two de deviated septums, and I could never breathe out of my nose. I was a mouth breather. breather. Now I can breathe out of my nose. It's so good to live with the lack of inflammation. And going into the, the chemical uh, response on my Alcat, ascorbic acid. I have a severe response to ascorbic acid, which, as you know, is one of the building blocks for vitamin C. And like Mackenzie, on the first of every month, I'm getting sick. I thought it was like a yeah. manifestation because I'm paying mortgage. No, I'm, I'm actually getting sick. It's not, it's not my body being repulsed by it. So when I was doing uh, vitamin drips, and after a vitamin drip, I would feel worse than I did before I oh, did the wow. vitamin drip. I didn't know that I had a response to ascorbic acid. We took ascorbic acid out, and now I feel better. I, I don't get sick as much. I, I replaced my vitamin C with strawberries, which is awesome for me. Um, <clears throat> Edward mentioned the CMA test, the cellular micronutrient assay. With that is also the cellular oxidative test. We take the cells, we put them into oxidants, we stress the cells, we observe how the cells respond. Do they respond to vitamin C, glutathione? It has a whole list of ways that your, your body protects itself. So we take the CMA, what's the vitamins that are in your cell, and we take the response to stress from your cells, and we combine them for the result of your, of your custom vitamins. We customize your vitamins based off of your blood work that we've done. And this is specifically for Edward, for Mackenzie, for myself. No one else can take it. It's not going to benefit them. It has my name on it. It's like, it's like a prescription bottle where it's 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 a bespoke vitamin based off your blood work. You know, yeah. A lot of people, about 70, 74, 75 percent of uh, Americans take a multivitamin of sorts, uh -huh. but we really don't really know why we're taking it. We've been told, yeah, take vitamin C, take zinc, take vitamin D, but there isn't really a way to see. Well, first of all, how's it being absorbed? How's your body reacting to this? Is it what it actually needs? With the testing that we've done, at, we had a, a previous client. Um, again, we do the serum test for vitamin D. His vitamin D came back at 45 nanograms per deciliter. We want it above 30, so he was in a healthy range. But he was still having a lot of symptoms of you know, lack of vitamin D, joint pains, arthritis, just not overall, overall feeling well. We did the uh, uh, micronutrient test and then the CMA test, and it turns out that his vitamin D intercellularly was lacking. He didn't have enough vitamin D inside the cell. He had enough around the cell. So what that means is there are certain nutrients and certain other vitamins which we tested for that's 
giving the ability for that pathway to get into the cell. So we created a bespoke vitamin package for him, uh, which he takes on a daily pace, basis now, and his symptoms have alleviated. So the wow. bioavailability of the vitamin D is more available for your body to ingest. That's this is where you know this is where I get the most excited for. This is what I consider biohacking because yeah. you know we're, we're trying to see what we're, we're going to see what your body actually needs, and then instead of us saying you know what this works for you know Peter and Paul, why don't we give it to you? It works for them. It should work for you. No, we say, let's see what your body says. What does your blood work tell us so we can do the right treatments uh, geared towards what your body actually needs? I love that this is taking health and wellness to a whole new level because you said it perfectly that we take a multivitamin because we're supposed to. How many times have I come into your clinic and I've argued with you that I want the immune drip and you're like, you don't need it, just get the Myers. And now we know specifically what my body needs is not going to be what Dr. Nassif needs or what my neighbor needs. It's what we all have different needs. And what I love is that you're now honing in on exactly but through these specific blood tests, what every body needs. Exactly. Yeah. You know, what's interesting is first of all, uh, incredible topics, Michael and Edward, um, you, you know that so years ago, before COVID, maybe we're talking maybe 12 years ago, there was a lot of companies out of San Diego. We were all doing the genetic testing mm -hmm. through saliva, for example, you know, which would sit and tell you what diet is going to work better for you, for example. You know, how is the protein, the fat, the meat, chicken, fish, all the different, uh, you know, vegan, all the different ways it's going to react with your body in regards to weight loss and inflammation. And then now with more technology, as you guys say, which I like, you know, you're looking at someone's blood mm -hmm. and you're looking at the inflammatory markers. And here you're looking at right now what food, which is fantastic. Um, and maybe also what chemicals or that you just said absorbic acid, which is unusual, obviously, that. You have a sensitivity yeah. to that. You know, when it comes to inflammation, so stress, cortisol, increased cortisol levels, and inflammation um, is what ages you. In addition to, you know, weight gain, and if it starts doing, you know, damage to the different cells and the different, you know, just even from the heaviness onto the joints, but more cardiovascular. So from what you guys are saying, you know, I like starting off with this, but I've been, and I know, and we're going to have to probably do two episodes, two of these. Yeah. Because <laughs> there's too much to talk about. Yeah. I way mean, too much. <laughs> I mean, we just gave everyone a tidbit <laughs> of measuring inflammatory markers and decreasing inflammation of your body. For example, when I wake up, like I had a little finger surgery um, not too long ago. But again, depending probably on my diet, mm -hmm. that next morning, you know, I'm looking at the edema, the swelling in my face, your body, your stomach, my fingers. It depends, like you mentioned, especially what's in today's food. It's the processed yeah. foods, um, or the processed yeah. food, I should say. And again, it's all these other things you're talking about. So this is one area for anti-aging that we have to look at. And that's only one area. Right. And that's a good summary, I think, to start off with. But what I would do want to do, and and I'm sure you're online with me, I want to spend a whole hour talking about the pros and cons, you know, of the different ways to treat weight loss. Since uh -huh. everyone, of course, is doing Ozempic and all the other different, uh, I mean, as you know, there's three or four different injections now. But it'd be good right. to also get into the different injections and the different meds. You know, because now they're different. Yeah. You know, too. Mm -hmm. You all mentioned testosterone, every one of you. And I know there's estrogen, progesterone. Mm -hmm. and there's all a lot of the, maybe the GH stimulators, growth hormone precursors or whatever you're doing. So can we spend a little bit of time talking about that since of course. it's such sure. a hot topic? Yeah. You know, Absolutely. there's, you know, there's the scary things about what people think about when it comes to testosterone and too much and then too little. So right. why don't we, tell me if you're okay with this, Mackenzie, 
Yeah. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about test. Yeah, I'm I'm totally down for it because I, I it is a hot topic and I know it can be scary for people and especially for women. But what I love about Evolve and Michael and Edward and how they handle things is they don't just like some places they just they give you the testosterone and you're on your way. Um, they are constantly looking at my blood work. They are constantly testing me and keeping an eagle eye on where is my testosterone, where is my estrogen, where is my progesterone. Now, thankfully, my estrogen and progesterone has always been good. I was lacking in testosterone. Now, you'd think as a woman, well, who needs to, you don't need to take testosterone. It's going to make you manly. It's going to give you a deep voice. You're going to have an Adam set. Do, do I look like a man? No. I, <laughs> and I'm shooting testosterone, but I go to their clinic and they give it to me. It is a building block and it's important in the, in the world of anti-aging, especially as the years go by. So, gentlemen, if you want to jump in and, and explain more on we testosterone. Have, yeah, we have to. So um, our our medical director, his name is Dr. Benito Venueva. He is a uh, board certified um, reproductive endocrinologist. His specialty is women's hormones. He was actually the first doctor in California to successfully do an IVF transfer. Um, he doesn't like me telling this story because it kind of ages him, but <laughs> he's a sweetheart of a man and he really, really has studied women's hormones and, and really has a, a good idea and good grasp of how to treat women with their hormones, with their uh, issues they might be having. Now, um, as you said, Mackenzie, um, women need testosterone, just like men need estrogen. Mm -hmm. okay? It's a balance, mm -hmm. right? Typically, men feel their best when their testosterone is around that 800, 900 to 1,000 nanogram per deciliter uh, volume. Women are about a tenth of that, right? They feel their best when it's that, that 70, 80 to 90 range right and then we have the estrogen we flip the estrogen men feel great around well four I, I like my estrogen around 45 50 nanograms um for women it's much higher so there's a balance that that, that happens for men and women for men uh, fortunately it's a little bit more cut and dry uh, because we don't yeah. necessarily give men estrogen what happens is uh, the testosterone converts into estrogen we keep an eye on that we make sure that it doesn't go too high because if it does go too high it's almost as bad as having too low testosterone. So we have certain things that we, medications that we bring that down back to a balance, right? And, um, you know, a lot of people say, oh, you know, it's really bad for you, whatnot. It's it's bad when you abuse it, just like yeah. anything, right? Just like alcohol, just like food, just like exercise. If you do too much of it, it's going to have a negative uh, side effect to it. Mm -hmm. So the type of testosterone that we use <clears throat> is called bioidentical hormone. And your body can't can't differentiate if it's naturally made from the testes for men and from the ovaries for women, or if it's an injectable source, right? As long as it keeps in a certain level that your body would naturally make if you didn't have infl inflammation, if you had the correct diet, if you didn't have any outside stresses, any cortisol issues, it would keep you at that level. And that's where we try to achieve, which is what we strive for. You know, and can you explain the anti-aging of testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, I mean, how that, when, when you do start to inject oh, yeah. at a certain age, how does that affect and help um, anti-aging? And what are the other benefits that you see in patients as they, they uh, get the proper dose of hormones? Yeah, absolutely. Mike, did you want to take this one? This is, I know this is your real specialty here. <laughs> it is. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so... <clears throat> Are, it's when we're when we're doing a hormone uh, replacement therapy. It's not just testosterone that that we need. The testosterone and estrogen need to bind, so the you know the, the cells can absorb it through the androgen receptor. Um, in terms of how it works in anti aging, hormones are very important for the way our brain functions. Our synapse is dependent on hormones. It's you know if you're low on hormones, it's the the best way I can describe in hormonal imbalance is if you have a V8 engine with no oil in it, you know, hormones kind of make everything work sufficiently. Usually to, to give you, to give you some anecdotal um, responses I've seen with clients here is when we get them on testosterone, let's say they've, they come in at 250 nanograms per deciliter of testosterone, which is low. Um, in, in this clinic, the range is 350 to 1100 nanograms per deciliter. As you know, it's a wide range and we'll get into, we'll get into that later. Sherman came in and he was low. He had low energy. He had low sex drive, low libido. Just in general, everything was kind of muted. Uh, we got him on testosterone and everything just kind of picks up. His energy's back. 
his libido is back. His cognitive function is phenomenal. He has no more brain fog. And that's that's what we're mainly after is the effects of testosterone on our ability to stay focused and to think, right? Um, one of the ways that it helps is by um, secreting serotonin from the amygdala. That, that's tremendous. And uh, as a mood regulator, mm-hmm. if you're stressed out and with low testosterone, it's it's kind of like um, – how, how what's the best way I can I can describe it when we have low testosterone it's like you're driving through a tunnel and the radio that you're listening to just kind of fades out the signal is lost but you're still you can still hear the background music a little bit you do a shot of testosterone it's like you come out of that tunnel and all of a sudden you have high hi-fi again you can you can exactly. hear everything normal yeah so um, when when men are coming in, and one of the first indicators that they have low testosterone is just the way they get out of the seat. They walk over to me and the way they introduce themselves. I can tell like there's, they're, they're a little sluggish. And usually after three months on being on testosterone, they come back, we do their blood work, we make sure everything is nice and nice and order. And they come back just perky. They're, they're just, they're a new person. They're coming in with their chests up. They've lost some weight. They have this glee, this look of happiness in their eyes. That's that's what we're mainly after with TRT. We don't care how much muscle you're building and all that stuff. All that stuff is just just for looks. Um, it's how the person feels, and that translates um, longevity wise. You know, if you're feeling great, you're you're going to take care of yourself. You're not going to be making yourself yourself feel better through quick means of happiness, such as bad foods, things like that. You're regulating your mood, which is going to help you make better lifestyle cho- choices. Um, I'm kind of going on many tangents here, um, so forgive me. Um, so when when somebody comes in at their three month marker for their blood work, what are we looking for? We are looking for what the testosterone's up to, what their estrogen is up to, which is just as important as testosterone. Usually, when men come in and they have low libido, brain fog, they usually have low estrogen, and that has a lot to do with our our sex drive. As well, uh, we check the uh, hemoglobin and hematocrit. We want to make sure that the hemoglobin, which is a mm-hmm. protein that attaches to the air molecule, is in a in a good balanced level. We don't want anything too high because that's where the negative side effects and the stereotypes of testosterone replacement therapy come from: the cardiovascular disease, the stroke, the heart attack. If the hemoglobin gets too high, the blood is becoming like ragu. It's going to start to clot, and arteries can can be something catastrophic. That's why we're so you know, we're so diligent on checking the, the blood as often as we do. Um, also, uh, what else are we checking? Um, oh, there's a list of things that we check. I mean, we all are yeah, we, being, our based on like CMP, lipid panels, um, hemoglobin yeah. A1C. Um, yeah, thank you for reminding me. So, yeah, if, if we're checking someone's CMP and we say, hey, their the LDL is sky high, their triglycerides are through the roof. Okay, maybe testosterone replacement therapy isn't the right solution for them. We have to identify... These, these cardiovascular risks, take care of those, get those under control. And who knows, maybe through diet, through the ALCAT testing, through all the various means that we have to take care of a patient, we improve their health in a way where, you know, their luteinizing hormone kind of kicks back up and their body's able to synthesize testosterone again. Maybe they didn't need TRT. Maybe they just needed a better lifestyle. And you know, you don't know what the problem is until we do the blood work. So I, I know I'm not answering your, your question specifically because it's it's there's so many things that go into it. And mm-hmm. how does it help with anti-aging? Well, we got to, you know, we got to we got to dig back into, into got some, a couple hours. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, so let me let me throw in some, you know, from the medical standpoint um, and from the uh, anti-aging thought process. First of all, you know what I'd love to do, since your medical director too is a, uh, ender- so not an OBGYN, GYN, but it's an endocrinologist, Dr. Villanueva. So he's, he's currently semi-retired. So, he, so, but he has, um, uh, you know, he's done the L and D he's done OBGYN. Oh yeah. Um, so that's his primary and then his subspecialty is the reproductive. Got it. Okay. Good, good, good. Yeah. Actually there was, um, a, a, a guy here in Beverly Hills years ago, and he might even be still doing it, but these were the original guys that were doing the, uh, um, I think it's Quad A C M or the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine. And um, this was a whole big group that 
As a matter of fact, my partner and I, my ex-partner, um, David Amron, who was a derm, we were going through this whole time when anti-aging first started coming out about trying to get board certified in that specialty. And it's something where we went and took, read everything and knew all the testing. And the thing is, this first doctor who was in Beverly Hills, he was an OBGYN, he was doing all the anti-aging work, especially with female hormones. And especially, this was maybe 40, 50 years ago, especially with a little bit of the test, testosterone and balancing estrogen and progesterone, especially when women either have problem with their menses or menorrhagia where they're bleeding too much or, of course, getting into uh, menopause and um, or polycystic disease where you make the mm -hmm. you know, cyst on the ovary. So it all started back then to balance. And the interesting thing, when you guys were talking about testosterone, I mean, you know, I mean, I'm 60. And obviously, as we get older, unfortunately, we drop. Our testosterone does. And um, and you're right. The first thing is you start seeing that decrease of energy, you know, the low mm -hmm. weakness. You know, I mean, I've been, you know, it's like you guys are in shape uh, better than me, but I've been lifting, for, you know, since I was like 18. And you start seeing the weakness. So for everyone out there that's listening, anti-aging, and this is one facet that we're talking about today. Yeah. We talked about inflammation, testosterone, estrogen blockers if needed for the male, enough progesterone estrogen for the female, the, and again, you know, the test that is given to a um, female that needs a little bit is like, you know, Mackenzie's doing. These are all important things. You know, there you're right. There are good things and bad things. Like if you overdo it, the cardiovascular disease with testosterone right. or irritability getting right. angry a lot because yet that goes up, it shoots you up. And um, for me, for an example, if I get up just because I'm on um, weekly injections myself of uh, because I'm 60 and my numbers were really low, like around 200. Wow. And if I get just a little bit too much, you know, I start getting irritated, you know, or aggravated a lot more. <laughs> but you're right, if you have, you know... As you get a little older and you have your cardiology workup once a year, which we all need to make sure that everything from yep. the cardiovascular standpoint is good. But with just like you said, you need that full blood panel. So for yeah. everyone out there, what's going to happen before you start anything? Yes. You're going to go to wherever you live. For example, um, let's say right now, and there's more and more companies, but Evolve, who's been doing it for a while, you got some great folks there that are putting this together. They're going to do a complete panel of all your blood work, everything. For the male, the PSA, um, you guys mentioned the hemoglobin A1C, the total test, the free test, the estrogen, all that, the prolactin, everything. And that's how you start getting on this. And you start off with the injectables or the creams or whatever you're going to do. And it's a way that you have to be followed up like they mentioned. You have mm -hmm. to be followed up. You can't start on this and then you're like done. You know, you got to follow right. up and make sure because as we mentioned, you got to do your, you know, your lipid, you know, and uh, you have to look at your lipid profile mm -hmm. um, and the C-reactive protein and all these different uh, Cleveland Clinic will take your cholesterol. And this is going to be a whole nother talk we need to have, by the way, just about <laughs> cholesterol, Mackenzie. Oh, yeah. Oh, There's yeah. A whole thing. Just on cholesterol, by the way. Yep. So, I, I mean, listening to this conversation, it's so important for the right balance, especially if it's not abused, especially if mm -hmm. the weightlifters are using it just to increase size. But again, the yeah. cardiovascular risk shoots up, yeah. you know, with, yeah. with all that. And so, yeah. you know, the guys, so let me ask you guys a question. Um, so what you guys will do, you're going to take the blood work, you're doing your Zooms, most likely probably your Skypes with like a nurse practitioner, PA, who's reporting yeah. to the uh, your medical director, and then they follow up routinely? Is that the way it works? Yeah, so uh, we, we typically we typically do blood work. Um, when we start a patient on, on testosterone, I, in my opinion, the secondary blood work is just as important, if not the, more important than the primary blood work. Oh, yeah. Because we want to see how they're reacting to treatment, right? Is their testosterone skyrocketing? 
are they ar- aromatizing so fast that you know their estrogen's out of control? Yeah. So there's so many different key factors. Um, so what we like to do is we start patients on testosterone, and we typically do a follow-up blood work within you know six to eight weeks. Weeks, yeah. After they start, that gives us enough time to to build the bases to see what's going on, how their body's responding to that. And once we have a, a, a what I like to call the homeostasis mark, where it's yes. like okay, we're starting you off on a, a certain amount of milligrams per week. We're giving you a certain amount of uh, you know milligrams for aromatase inhibitors per week, and everything's in balance. That's when we would go to the uh, the coasting or the cruising uh, dosage for everything, and that's where we do the check for every quarter, every three months. We do blood work and to make sure, just to make sure, is everything on track? Did anything change? Did you get more stressed at work or at the home lifestyle, so where you your cortisol levels went up higher, so you need a higher dose of testosterone? Did things improve so much that you built, you lost fat, and you're working out more? You're doing more squats and deadlifts, so your testosterone is naturally going to get raised. Do we need to bring our levels down a little bit? So. You know, it's yeah. it's it's fine tuning. It's it's definitely like, um, uh, you know, it's 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 more of a uh, you're flying a, a, an aircraft versus just putting an autopilot and driving. You know, you got so many instruments, you got to make sure this gauge is right, that gauge is right. Now let's keep it on a straight line as much as possible. See the, what the I most consistent, Sorry, sorry, because the Never most went. consistent thing that we're we're uh, we're doing with our patients is estrogen. People are aromatizing. That's converting the testosterone to estrogen, right? that's it's a very important process for men we need the estrogen and sometimes you know my my target estrogen is 35 picograms for ed it's 45 50. we have some patients who even at 25 which is you know it's on the lower side sensitivity in the in the nipples they're getting agitated things like that are occurring so we have them come in and do the blood work we get the results in about 15 to 30 minutes anyway it's, we're the lab it's awesome <laughs> So we can, you know, we, we send that information back to, to our medical director. He gives us the recommendation and we make the adjustments right then and there. So we're able to, you know, instead of the patient waiting three months to, to you know, for their, you know, for their time to do the blood work, they come in, then they wait a couple of days. No, you're having a problem. Come in. Let's do the blood work. Yeah. Give, it, give us 45 minutes. We'll fix the problem and you're on your way. So that's one of the benefits of having a lab on site too. Yeah. So we can do whatever we want, whenever we want. We don't have to worry about a third party getting back to us. We send it to the doctor. The doctor gives us a recommendation. Bada bing. Let's get going. <laughs> and to I mean, your I point, think- Dr. Nassif, I, I yeah. love that they start conservatively because you made a good point on that where and anything to abuse, uh, but this in particular, what I've always appreciated is you start conservatively. So there really is, even as you get to that second blood test, third blood test, as you keep going, there's, I've never had an issue. I've never had a problem. So that's been the beautiful thing about doing these treatments with a, a company like Evolve is it's it's all conservative. And I think we're running out of time. But one thing that's so important too is that everything you guys said, you know, makes it, it's something. Especially some people have their own anti-aging doctor, mm-hmm. um, and that's great. You know, as long as again you're going to someone and you have that, and this is a great alternative. When mm-hmm. you don't have that, and I got to tell you, it's hard to find a good anti-aging doctor that's yeah going to watch you and micromanage you, as you just heard about. You know, it's like flying a plane. There's looking instruments all the time, and that's how yeah. you need to be managed. So this is not something like, wake, oh yeah, just put me on this and I walk out the door. Yeah. So for everyone, when it comes to anti-aging medicine, whether it's from metformin to Ozempic to any of these type of hormonal replacement therapy, HRT, you need to make sure that you're following. And remember, our goal is we're not pushing any one company, but the yeah. point is what's great about Evolve is, you know, you got Mackenzie here who loves these guys. And by the way, <laughs> you you might be seeing me soon too. I got to, you know, I want to get a little bit more. <laughs> you blood should, Doc. Hey, Dr. Nassif, we've been going it. together. Let's, let's get a here photo of Actually, uh, let's, you yeah. and I'll sit and get a drip together. <laughs> You know what I, I was thinking when I was considering you're saying that you know we need to do a follow up to this. I'd love to get your blood work on this Alcan CNA and see what's causing your inflammation if you have any, and um, yeah, and we come back, we come back, and you, you can share your results with everybody. Say, hey, you know what? Proof is in the pudding. I mean, it'd be our pleasure to take yeah. care of you. Well, then I'm going to ask you a favor. Then you're going to hate this, but <laughs> since I we can't get out of here. Can you guys? We do. Con- I already know where you're going. Blood? We do concierge. Don't worry about it. We hey, have brother, they do class. <laughs> all fast. Listen, and you can do the whole spiel on me. I'm not going to hide anything. 
Yeah, the fasting is not necessary for this because we're it's it's a six month average of what your body's doing. Yeah, right. Okay, so not the it's kind of like the You're right. I'm talking about in case yeah. you're doing lipids and uh, oh, yeah. like and all that stuff. Yeah. You know, we'll and, be yeah. happy to listen. I'm into yeah. it. I mean, okay, so let's do that. Let's actually okay. we'll review it and we can do a deep dive into it. I mean, listen, we can keep talking. I mean, we can do oh, three God, episodes yeah. just <laughs> right. just on this alone, and we could have yeah. fun yeah. with it. Because I'm sure everyone, you know, when, even though we have demystified beauty, it's health. Beauty is health. Yeah. Remember, yeah. beauty on the inside and the outside. Mm-hmm. And remember, Absolutely. it works both ways, you know. So especially when you're feeling good on the inside, you're beautifying your inside. It also works on the outside to it's your everything. But the Absolutely. biggest thing, too, is where we need to find something, and this will be another good topic to talk about, is how to decrease... Um, Cortisol and the stress yes, levels. Stress. And, and and you mentioned um NAD and all these other things because I know there's pros and cons of that. We've got to talk about that. I mean, we gotta talk yep. about some other stuff. We haven't even talked about peptides. Peptides. I know. Peptides. I know. That's one of my favorites yes. too. <laughs> so much. So just just to touch on that, just to touch on that. Um, we have a lot of testosterone clients that come in. We check their cortisol, we send that out. We don't do that in house yet. Yeah. We check their cortisol, we get them on testosterone. Six months later, not not the time after, but you know the the net, the the second time we're going to be doing their follow up blood work, we check cortisol again, and it's lower. And our anecdotal thought process on this is we're reducing the symptoms of cortisol, the weight gain, the lack of sleep, the stress, the overall stress. When you remove the symptoms, it gives the body a chance to stop. You know, yeah. when, when you have a symptom of cortisol, it makes a negative cycle of cortisol. You're st- it's stressing your body out. You take away the symptoms, we've seen cortisol levels decrease. So hopefully we can dive more into that, as you said, doctor, in the next couple of episodes. Oh, oh yeah. Well, well, listen, I think I think we're probably even over time, um, aren't we, Mackenzie? Yeah, I think, I think we, we, we just are. about are. We're, we're going to have to do probably several episodes with you guys because there I mean, is you know. so much in this world to touch upon. And I feel lucky and blessed enough that I've had all of you to help me Dr. Nassif on the outside, Michael and Edward on the inside. You know, I, I feel really lucky to to have a team, if you will. But I, I think, you know, Dr. Nassif, you put it uh, perfectly that not everybody does have access to this and to not just jump at somebody that's just going to offer up testosterone and be on your way, but to have somebody that can watch you. And I, I think, Dr. Nassif, you spoke about that just as we close on this, that it's it's very important to make sure you vet out who you're going to. Oh, you have to. I mean, you know, so the whole thing is this is such an important, you know, it's such an important topic. Yeah. And that's, in all honesty, that's how we, we came about to, to, to get this clinic going is because, like I said, Mike and I were, were clients of another uh, facility. You know, the doctor was great. He, he knew what he was doing, but he didn't have that deep dive into it. The staff wasn't, mm. it just didn't feel right. And both Mike and I come from a medical background. Um, I've been a phlebotomist since 1999. So I do IVs, I do phlebotomy. And, you know, I'm very versed in, in the medical field. And it, it's, it's, it comes to a point where it's like, wait, there's, there's, there's a piece that's missing, that, that human element of like, let's make sure that we're all taken care of. It's not about, you know, how much money can we extract out of – no, it's not about that. It's about let's get people the care that they need. And, and you know, to touch base, Dr. Nassif, you know, you're on, you're on testosterone. That's fantastic. I've, I've had low testosterone since I was in my late 20s. I didn't get on testosterone until I was 33. So I've been on it for 10 years now. So I'm 43 years old. And just the one, one little small thing that I want to touch base about is, you know, when I started testosterone, one, one of the, the small things that, that, you know, it's not small. It was actually very concerning things that, that I wanted to keep in mind is they say when you get on testosterone for men, you become infertile and you can't have kids. And that's always been a scare for me. Well, that's true. If like we said, if you abuse it, it's balanced. That's yeah. one of the myths that I definitely want to address and we have multiple, multiple clients that are on testosterone, have kids, no issues there. Again, because we're in a balance. We're not overdoing it where the body's going to shut down. All about balance. Listen, it's great having both of you guys. And Mackenzie, I, I love hanging out with you. Um, I love hanging out with you. This is such a great topic. <laughs> and this is my beauty. You know, listen, everyone. So my, you know, our thing for the week is, again, anti-aging. Listen, 60 is the new 40. Amen. That's, that's my one liner for the week. I hope. <laughs> then I'm taking so. 45 as the new 25. <laughs> uh, there we go. So we'll see everyone next week. And um, 
we're going to keep having a lot of, listen, you know, we're mixing a lot of beauty and plastic surgery and the skin and anti-aging. It all ties together. We'll see you all next week. Yes. And guys, what is your Instagram and all your social oh, yes. media so we can get everybody to, to oh, check yes, you yes. out? Thank you. Yeah. Our uh, Instagram is evolve underscore anti-aging. And uh, yeah, give us that give a follow and you can reach us there. Um, I think our uh, Facebook is the same as well. So if you have any questions or, you know, feel free to call us, um, email us, text us, however you want to get in contact with us. We'd be happy to help you. And Dr. Nassif and I'll be in soon. <laughs> oh, yeah. Awesome. yeah wait. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for listening to Demystify Beauty, produced by Gotham Production Studios. If you have any questions for future episodes, please don't hesitate to reach out to us on Instagram at Demystify Beauty, D E M Y S T I F Y Beauty, or email us at demystifybeauty at gmail.com. Please don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review the show. See you next time.